Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to the channel. I know my videos as of late have been coming out rather slow and I do apologize for that. But work has been crazy busy and unfortunately it comes first. Now that project season is winding down at work, I can now get back to this hobby of playing with speakers and creating some fun content. Just to recap, in part 1 I calculated the volume of my JBL 550P enclosure, talked about what I was looking for in a replacement driver, and then modeled my new design in WinISD using various drivers to find what would work best with my enclosure size. After hours of playing with different drivers, I decided to go with a 10 inch driver from Creative Sound Solutions. Now that my new driver has arrived in the mail, it's time to go over the specs and install it. So let's get started. So why did I go with a Creative Sound Solutions STX-10 driver? Simply put, because it was the best driver that modeled well in WinISD with my JBL enclosure. Not only that, CSS has a good reputation of building some quality drivers. I wanted a driver that would put sound quality first over output, and I think the SDX-10 will fill those needs. This subwoofer features an XBL2 motor design. This design allows for ultra-low distortion, increased X-Max, low inductance, and a broad and flat BL curve, which should all add up to a great sounding driver. This driver is rated for 750 watts of RMS power and is also fairly efficient with a sensitivity rating of 87.2 decibels at 2.83 volts. Would this driver benefit from having a more powerful amplifier? Absolutely, but I think the original 300 watt JBL amplifier will be adequate at normal listening volumes. I did try and purchase a Bash 500 watt plate amplifier to test with this subwoofer, but unfortunately, the one I received from Parts Express arrived DOA. I was really hoping to do a Doom SPL test with this new amplifier, because I think it would have definitely brought it into the 100 decibel mark. But I guess that test will have to wait until I can get this amp repaired. Well, audiophiles, I have some bad news about the uh, JBL Project subwoofer. This is the new 500 watt Bash amplifier that I ordered for it from Parts Express. This is a refurb unit, so I got a really good deal on it. I think I paid somewhere around $220 shipped to my door for this unit, but unfortunately it's DOA. It does not work. But the weird thing is, is it powers on, I get a green LED light, but I just get no output, no sound whatsoever. So I kind of looked at uh, you know the boards here and all the capacitors and everything looks good. It does look like someone was messing with the uh, transistors here, uh, right in this area. So that's probably what they replaced when they brought it in for you know warranty last time, you know, because it is a refurbished unit. But everything looks good to me. I went ahead and contacted Parts Express already about this uh, amplifier, and they went ahead and refunded my money. Um, no questions asked. I mean, that's what I love about uh, Parts Express. Um, great service, customer service. So that's why I continue to buy from them. But anyways, if you guys know of uh, a shop that can repair these, please let me know by commenting down below because I would like to get this repaired so I can um, test it with my new JBL uh, subwoofer and driver combo. And I'm hoping with this amplifier, I might be able to hit 100 decibels on my Doom SPL test. So, if anybody knows, just comment down below. Thank you. So what kind of improvements can I expect by swapping out the factory JBL driver with a new one from Creative Sound Solutions? Well, now that I have a Dayton Audio DATS V3 tool, I can now retrieve the TS parameters for any speaker driver and then model their performance in a program called WinISD. The blue line on this chart is the frequency response curve of a factory JBL 550P subwoofer. As you can tell from this chart, this setup is overdamped and the response curve is far from flat. This type of design is typical with subwoofers which have a very low QTC value. Now watch what happens to the response curve when I install a driver from Creative Sound Solutions. The red line is the performance of my JBL 550P subwoofer after installing a Creative Sound Solutions SDX10 driver. As you can see from the chart, the frequency response curve is much flatter and is more in line with the Butterworth filter alignment. At 20 Hz, my modified subwoofer is a full 1 dB louder than the stock subwoofer. And at 30 Hz, my modified subwoofer is over 2.5 dB louder than the stock subwoofer. That's a dramatic improvement over the factory unit. 
With my new SDX10 driver installed, movie and music performance will get a huge bump in sound quality and output. So how hard is it to install a Creative Sound Solutions SDX10 driver into a JBL 550P cabinet? Simply put, this is a drop-in fit that requires no dramatic modifications. If you saw my Klipsch subwoofer upgrade video series, then you know it took me quite a bit of work to fit the new driver and port design in that cabinet. But with this upgrade, all you have to do is drill some new holes and drop in the new driver and boom, you have dramatically improved the sound of this subwoofer. So let me show you how I did this upgrade, step by step. Use a 3mm Allen to remove all of the screws that hold the driver to the front baffle. Now with all of the screws out, I then flip the cabinet up in its normal resting position while simultaneously holding the driver with my hand until it fell out. Here I'm using my new Creative Sound Solutions driver as a template to drill the new mounting holes. I carefully center the driver in the cabinet and position it for its final mounting location. Once I'm happy with where the driver is, I use a 1 16th of an inch drill bit to drill the new holes. After drilling the new mounting holes, I then seal the old mounting holes with silicone caulk to ensure that I have an airtight seal. Here I'm using a pair of dikes to remove the push-on speaker connectors from the amplifier's wiring harness. After I remove the push-on speaker connectors, I then use a set of wire strippers to expose fresh copper wire so I can connect my new subwoofer driver to the amplifier. I'll be using blue tack to ensure I have a good seal between the driver and the front baffle because I don't want any air leaks. This stuff is like silly putty and is a great product to use for making speaker gaskets. I have used blue tack many times to make speaker gaskets out of and it has never let me down. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to get some for yourself. I gently lower the driver into its mounting location and then tighten the mounting screws in an alternating fashion until all of the screws are securely fastened. You'll want to go around tightening all of the screws slowly to allow time for the blue tech to compress and settle. If you tighten one screw all the way down on the first pass, you risk stripping it out. Here's the finished product. I think it turned out great. I've always liked the aesthetic appeal of the 550p cabinet, and turning it into a monster of a sub was very easy to do. So how much did all of this cost me? The CSS SDX10 driver sent me back around $250. The Bluetech gasket maker was another $10, and I paid $190 for my JBL 550p subwoofer. So all in, I'm out $450 for what I think is a much, much better subwoofer. I know not many people are willing to invest this kind of money into a budget subwoofer, but the cabinet on the JBL 550P is anything but budget. The JBL 550P is a great cabinet to start a build from, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. So now let's get this thing hooked up so I can give you my listening impressions. Holy cow, this is incredible how much better this subwoofer sounds with just a simple driver upgrade. The bass from Explosions is much more realistic sounding and has much greater depth, accuracy, and output than the factory driver. During the opening scene of Tenet, when the bad guys blow up the theater, I could feel the explosion from the bomb when it detonated right in my chest. The impact from the explosion was very cool and lifelike. When I tested a stock JBL 550P in these same listening conditions, it had trouble filling the room with adequate bass but that is no longer a problem with this new driver installed. I then put in War of the Worlds because I love how when the alien craft shoots their guns, you can feel every gun noise in your chest and floor as long as you have a decent subwoofer. During these same scenes with the stock JBL subwoofer, I would always have problems with the driver bottoming out, but with this new driver installed, I can play it at stupid volume levels without any risk of bottoming it out. I'm very impressed with this subwoofer's performance during movies, especially for a sealed cabinet design. I did a few back-to-back -back tests between my modified JBL sub and my RHEL HT1205, and I felt that my modified JBL sub not only sounded better, but had more output too. I will confirm all of this in part 3 of this video series when I do an SPL test. 
During my music listening sessions is where I felt my modified JBL subwoofer really shined. I tried a variety of music genres and this subwoofer just kept on delivering clean, natural, and distortion free bass that really amped up the realism of the tracks that I was listening to. I was very impressed by the incredible depth that this subwoofer delivered during drum beats and bass guitar notes. The realism was astonishing. This subwoofer made a dramatic improvement to the front soundstage during my listening sessions when compared to the original JBL 550P subwoofer. Not only did I have more realistic sound from bass notes, but the bass output was effortless and seamless. This subwoofer now blends so well with my main speakers that it felt like the subwoofer and mains were all working in unison. I know these next words out of my mouth may be somewhat controversial, but I feel very confident in saying that my modified JBL subwoofer is one tiny notch better than my RHEL HT1205 in both music and movie performance, which is pretty impressive considering an HT1205 retails for $749. I can only imagine how much better my modified JBL subwoofer would be if it had an amplifier equally as good as the one in the REL. Overall, I'm very happy with this upgrade and plan on using this subwoofer in my main listening room for my music listening sessions for many years to come. Join me in part 3 when I do an SPL test and compare it to my REL HT1205 and SVS SB3000. Will my modified JBL subwoofer be able to hang with the big boys during this test? Find out in part three. So long and happy listening.